What's up guys, Doug Polk here and welcome back to Poker Hands where today we're going to be taking a look at a hand from a super high roller cash game from Triton Poker. We're going to be taking a look at another hand from the same game we looked at last time. So once again, the blinds will be 1 million, 2 million Korean won, which approximates out to around a 1600-ish dollar big blind. Andrew Robles once again one of the players in this hand, but this time around he's going to be up against a familiar foe and friend. JRB. Rumors had it for quite some time that the reason that Robo got into a lot of these high stakes games was because he was backing JRB. So now it's interesting to see them here at the same table, and I wonder if that plays into the dynamic in the hand. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the action. He really has been sick. <laughs> Look good, you've been sick. He really has been sick. His arm's been broke. Yeah. Is that true? I played with you guys when I had that. Yeah, I broke both my arms. That's why I, you, you played really elevation. tight that night because you couldn't bet because you couldn't move. <laughs> it's probably true. I mean, it's a lot of extra effort. Normally, you got to think about, okay, what do I do to get the guy to fold? How many chips do I grab? Our hand begins with the action folding around the JRB with pocket queens under the gun plus three. Jerry raises up to six million Korean won, nothing really to talk about here. And the action folds around to Robo in the small blind who looks down at ace 10 offsuit. And this is already kind of an interesting situation to talk about without much having happened. The small blind is a tricky place to play. Unlike the big blind, you do not close the action out pre-flop guaranteeing a flop. So you do sometimes get squeezed. And then additionally, your price is substantially worse. And then post-flop, if the big blind comes along, you're out of position against both players. So it's a much worse spot to be calling pre flop than compared to the big blind. Because of this, you should be playing a lot tighter. Maybe against standard sizes, you want to play about 20% of your hands or 15% of your hands in the small blind, but you'd want to play closer to 50, 60, or 70% of the big blind given the pot odds that you're getting. In a normal cash game, I would say facing a 3x in the small blind with ace-10 offsuit, you actually have a pretty easy fold. What makes this a little more complex though is the fact there is a big blind anti in play, so there's 2 million extra one out there to be one in the pot. Didn't mean to do that. I think regardless, even with that extra money, you should mainly be folding this here in the small blind, once in a while mixing a three bet, and then maybe every now and then mixing in a call as well. But again, you're gonna not do so hot in these small blind calls. I've looked at a lot of samples online about how these go. It's not pretty. There is a chance, however, that Robo thinks that JRB is gonna play pretty bad post-flop and he's getting good enough odds considering that. It's a reasonable argument. Anyway, Robo does decide to call. The big blind gets out of the way, and let's take a flop. How many chips do I grab? I check then one. you gotta think, how do I move my arm to grab the chips? It's like, oh shit, okay, I check. <laughs> <laughs> Too much effort, right? Yeah, it's just. The flop comes 7 4 deuce rainbow, and Robo's check dark over to JRB. JRB now with his pocket queens is going to have to go ahead and do some betting. I don't mind going for a smaller size bet or a bigger size bet here. I think there are a lot of good options that you could make work, especially on a board like this where the preflop razor is going to have a lot of overpairs the small blind simply isn't going to have. Ultimately, JRB decides to bet 10 to 16 million here on the flop. And now the action's back over to Robo. And you know, if you've been here on the channel a while, you'll know one of my favorite slogans, which is, all three options are good here. You want to do some folding, some calling, some raising, and you want to blend it together to create this beautiful cocktail of, of, of poker strategy that's non-transparent. You never know what they're doing. It's just, it's just, it's amazing to see. This isn't one of those spots. Just fold. Sure, maybe JRB bluffs you sometimes with hands like Queen Jack, which by the way, still have a lot of equity against you. But he's also gonna have you clobbered in spots like this. Really, when he has any pair, you're not doing very good, you're not in very good shape. He can even have ace jack, ace queen, ace king himself, and have you dominated. There's just no reason to call here at all. Just fold. Robo, though, he's got other intentions here, and he makes those clear by floating the flop. Let's go ahead and take a turn. Apparently Tom Duan broke his arms. Played tighter because he couldn't move his chips. Onto the hand. JRB bet the flop, got called by Robo. Robo turns one of the best cards for his hand. Thinks it's good, and he's going to call again here. The turn comes at 10. I'm starting to see Robo's plan materialize here a little bit. Now he's got top pair, top kicker, a hand that can definitely go the distance for a couple more bets. Problem is, JRB still got a B. He's got an over pair here to Robo's top pair, top kicker, so. Uh, Robles in, in rough shape unless he can improve. 
Robo checks over to JRB, and now JRB's got to size up this turn bet. And this is a spot you're going to definitely want to be betting. Sometimes you want to pot control and, and, and really not allow your opponent to have a chance to check raise you. But what hands have really improved to beat you here in JRB's shoes? I mean, maybe 10 7 suited, but it's pretty unlikely that's even calling preflop. Really, the only hand that might improve to beat you here is pocket tens. It's simply too rare. You got to go ahead and bet the turn here and get some value. JRB agrees and goes for a rather large turn bet of 25 into 36 million. And all in all, I'm still on board with this. Your hand's certainly good enough to value bet. There are plenty of worse hands that can call you. Uh, there aren't really too many draws here on this rainbow board, so I'm not really looking to deny equity too much, but I still like the idea for what he's trying to accomplish. Back over to Robo, and he might not be thrilled when he sees this large bet from JRB, but at the same time, he's now got top air, top kicker. He's not going anywhere, and let's take a river. River card is a 10. Robo makes trip 10s of an ace kicker. JRB probably thinks his queens are good here. It's hard for his opponent to actually have a 10. JRB is going to bet again. Trying to get some value out of like a 7. 45 million. It's about 40,000 USD. Robo trying to decide should he raise here. Robo with Trip 10's best kicker. Only loses to a full house. He's going to check raise. Is that a raise or a call? Raise. The river comes another 10, and now I see where Andrew Robo was going with this. Backdoor trips moves into the lead, and it's a very disguised backdoor trips because he shouldn't have it. Like, almost ever. Now, there are a couple hands that could make some sense. Ace, 10 of hearts or spades could be a hand that would check call the flop with the backdoor nut flush draw, particularly on this deep of a stack. But all in all, it's pretty rare he's going to have that hand compared to a hand like nines or eights or maybe a hand like ace seven suited or eight seven suited uh, it's hard for me to know exactly what his preflop calling range looks like but given that it had ace 10 in it i'm pretty sure it's pretty wide robo checks over to jrb and now jrb is going to bet once again you know this is a spot where it's actually tempting to bet very large like full pot or so because there really aren't that many hands that have you beat now pocket tens is even less likely uh, and if your opponent did have a set they probably would have raised flop return so you're not going to see too many sets left in their range you're going to be looking at a lot of hands that are one pair that you've got beat. And so because of that, I wouldn't mind seeing JRB go for a very large river bet here, something in the vicinity of full pot. You can go smaller too. You should certainly mix some of those into your strategy, but this is a spot where you should feel very comfortable and safe that you're ahead. JRB goes for a little over half pot, also a totally fine play, and now the action's over to Robo. Robo has a crystal clear check raise. There's nothing to think about here. You got trips, top kicker. Uh, additionally, your opponent could have any over pair of things that it's good. Uh, there are just simply too many hands. He could have a worse 10. This is a no-brainer check raise here in Robo's shoes. The question really is what size. Uh, and I think something around 150 or so looks to be the appropriate size. You know, typically in these river raise spots, you want to go 3 or 4x your opponent's bet size. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing this be anywhere in the vicinity of, let's just say, 110, 120, all the way up to 160, 170. Really, anything in that ballpark is pretty fair. Uh, as stacks get shorter, you typically want to make your all in closer to all, your, sorry, your raise size closer to all in, but you can use some smaller bet sizes, particularly on boards that the card removal effects are fairly significant. Even though this is a paired board, I don't think this is one of them because neither player has a 10 very often, and so I just go with a fairly normal raise size hero, about 4x the bet in the river. Back over to JRB, this is a tough spot now. Uh, the good news is that you can have some very strong hands. You can have every set here. You could have some 10x hands that bet flop, bet turn. Uh, so you can have some of those extremely strong holdings, but you're probably going to have to call some over pairs every now and then. If you fold your bluffs to this, and then you fold every over pair to this, well, you're going to be doing a ton of folding, and so you're going to have to think of some hands that could make sense to call. I think one of the absolute best over pairs to call would be a hand like the ace, aces with the ace of hearts, ace of spades, 
hands, where now those hands that we talked about earlier, the back door and flush draws, well, you can't even have those because you block them so your opponent is less likely to even have value than they would be normally. So maybe some over pairs when you have this spade and heart can be a bit more reasonable than when you have the diamond or club. And that's the kind of thing you have to get used to. In a lot of these situations, you're going to have to make some thin decisions, right? You can't, you don't have to always call your over pairs. You have tons of them. You, you don't have to call them very often at all, but you do have to call them every now and then. And that's really what it takes to play at high stakes. The subtle differences between these holdings, what makes a good call, what makes a good fold when you're constructing your entire range. But you know what? Maybe you don't need all that nerdy math stuff. Maybe you just got to look a man in his eyes and know when he's got it, he's got it. And that's what JRB decides to try and do here. JRB correctly lays it down. Knew where he's at. Sneaky there, Robo. Check it here, buddy. I assumed you guys thought I was joking and he called, but no, he actually, he actually just folded. So, yeah. Seems good. If you enjoy nerdy math stuff, well, I'd recommend checking out my poker training site, upswingpoker.com.